Good evening, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to the February 7th, 2017 VISTA Planning Commission meeting. Commissioner Bell, will you lead us in the pledge, please? <clears throat> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Turley, will you call the roll, please? I will. Commissioner Carroll? Here. Chairman Kramer? Here. Commissioner Bell? Here. Commissioner Gerritsen? Here. Commissioner Jacko? Here. Commissioner Rosler? Here. Commissioner Looney? Here. Student Commissioner Agueda? Here. And Student Commissioner Cranford? Absent. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, commissioners, before you are the minutes from the January 17th, 2017 meeting. If there are are there any changes that need to be made to the minutes? If not, will someone present a motion, please? Commissioner Rossler. Move that we adopt the minutes as presented. Commissioner Gerritsen. A second. Thank you. Commissioners, please vote. So sorry. Uh, let the record show that the minutes pass unanimously with Commissioner Jackal abstaining. Ms. Chow, are there any agenda changes for this evening's meeting? Uh, good evening, Chairman Kramer. No changes tonight. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Before we start our official meeting, um, now would be the time if you wish to speak on any matter that is not on this evening's agenda. And I don't see any speaker slips, but I just wanted to check. Okay, seeing none. Uh, commissioners, are there any disclosures before we begin? Commissioner Gerritsen? Just wanted to mention that I did meet with the applicant on Buena Creek, and uh, it's been about 40 minutes just walking around and asking some questions. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Commissioner Jackal. I have a disclosure for uh, the second item at 1525 Buena Vista Drive. Um, I'm a member of the board of South Vista Communities and uh, Mr. Brady met with that board, but I was not part of that meeting. Not been part of any minutes or anything. Okay, thank you. All right. Ms. Chow, do you want to lead us through the first public hearing item, please? Sure. Good evening, Chairman Kramer, Planning Commissioners, Patsy Chow, Deputy Director of Community Development Department, City Planner. The item before you this evening is the annexation request for the Olive Avenue annexation, which is also accompanied by a pre-zoning request, a general plan amendment, and a tentative subdivision map. The particular project has been proposed on a 3.03 acre site, and which will end up resulting in the creation of eight single family residential lots. They would range in size from about 10,000 square feet, which is about 0.23 of an acre, to about 27,000 square feet in size. So resulting in a density of 2.6 dwelling units per acre. There will be some associated drainage improvements, wet and dry utilities, uh, three private driveways as depicted, and I'll be showing that later on on a tentative subdivision map, which will be private driveways A, B, and C, serving the particular lots. And uh, as with a tentative subdivision map, as with other tentative subdivision maps that you've seen in the past, there are no homes that are being proposed at this time, but future homes that would be constructed, they would have to comply with the uh, proposed R1 zone requirements and uh, particular development standards. So just aerial photo depicting the project site in the center, surrounded by residential land uses, single family uses, 
within the city, which is actually colored, the light yellow is actually within the city boundaries. And uh, to the north and to the west of the site, it's actually city of Oceanside, uh, but also comprised, again, of uh, residential uses in, within that jurisdiction. The pre-zoning request is for the R1 zone, and with the accompanied, accompanied by a proposed GP general plan designation of medium low density at five dwelling units per acre. The existing general plan designation on the site is RR, which is rural residential at one dwelling unit per acre. As shown on this photo, the slide, the MLD designation that's being uh, proposed for this location at five dwelling units per acre with the R1 pre-zone. It's surrounded to actually to the east and to the south. You will find the same MLD designation in yellow, and it is also zoned R1. So it is consistent with the surrounding properties to the east and to the south within the city of Vista. In terms of key issues for this particular request, in terms of general plan consistency, as mentioned before, the lots range in size from about 10,000 square feet to 27,000, which would be consistent with the MLD designation that's being proposed for the site along with the R1 zone. It is consistent with the surrounding land uses being residential within the city, uh, city of Vista, as well as the uh, um, surrounding, um, the actual other properties within the city of Oceanside and zoning, so in terms of single family uses being around the particular project. It is consistent with uh, Lucy policies, which is the land use community identity element policies 13.1 through 13.5 with respect to annexations as detailed in the staff report. And as far as drainage and sewer issues, the proposed project would connect to existing services or existing sewer and water systems available on Olive Avenue and the proposed storm drain system. And at the end of the, uh, the project, with the proposed project, obviously it would be improving the existing on-site drainage conditions with these proposed improvements. Some photos of the project site from Olive Avenue at the top left corner, Olive Avenue looking west. Next to it, Olive Avenue looking east with the project site on the left side of the uh, photo there. And the third photo on the top row is looking northeast from the project site showing the existing house that's located in the center of the subject site. The bottom row is on the left side is looking north at the site, uh, looking northeast at the site with the houses, the single family homes uh, in the far distance. And then the last photo on the right side is a picture across the street on Olive Avenue uh, looking immediately at the project site, which is up higher, as you can tell from the photo up on the slope area. So in terms of the tentative subdivision map, there are eight single family lots being proposed uh, with uh, three private driveways, A, B, and C. And there are also bioretention basins proposed on lots one, four, and five. And there will be also potential uh, locations for additional detention basins at the remaining lots when the actual construction of those particular lots actually uh, take place, which is also uh, accounted for in the water quality report. In terms of the landscape plan, it meets the landscape ordinance as far as street trees and slope erosion control. And there is a uh, use of native as well as non-native plant materials throughout the uh, slope areas and street trees and parkway landscaping. A mitigated neck deck was prepared for this project and was available for public review January 27th through February 25th of last year. There were four, four comment letters that the city received and we prepared responses to them um, and responses were provided to the commenters. In terms of the uh, general plan uh, development code and design guidelines conformance, the, the, the proposed density at 2.64 dwelling units per acre is below what's being proposed at five dwelling units per acre under the MLD designation. And again, proj uh, the project and all the future homes that are built uh, on those lots will actually have to meet the, the standards of the R1 zone. At this point, I'd like to add into the record a condition item F3DC, which is an engineering condition related to a five foot irrevocable offer of dedication on IOD that was actually shown on sheet two of two on the tentative map that is actually not needed for the project. So we're putting that into the condition, um, identifying that that's the fact that it's no longer needed for the project. However, a 17-foot dedication along the property frontage on Olive Avenue is required. It is depicted on sheet two of two, so we're just mainly um, reiterating that here just for clarity purposes as part of this condition. 
So the recommendation from staff is uh, for the Planning Commission to recommend to City Council approval of the mitigated neck deck, along with a uh, recommendation to the City Council that it makes an application to LAFCO, the Local Agency Formation Commission, for this annexation reorganization, and also a recommendation that the City Council approve the tentative map along with the general plan amendment to change the designation from rural residential to medium low density and also changing the zone to pre-zoning to R1 with the added condition F3DC as I previously stated in the previous slide. That concludes my presentation. I'm available for any questions you may have. Thank you. Commissioners, any questions of staff before we open the public hearing? Commissioner Rossler. Mr. Chow, um, could we go back to the map originally that showed the city boundaries, uh, probably the very first one that you, sure. you showed? That's probably this one. Would this help? Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, is the property to the northeast uh, that has the panhandle that comes down and fronts on Olive Avenue, is that property in the city, in the county, in Oceanside? Uh, that property is actually ends in the county. In the county. Mm -hmm. Any discussion with the property owner about joining the proceedings to, for the annexation? They have not, to my knowledge, and not approached the city with regards to trying to annex into the city. And I don't believe they have approached the applicant of this particular project, although the applicant is here, if you would like for them to confirm that. Um, but not to my knowledge, we have not been approached by them. Okay, the city hasn't initiated anything. We have okay. not. And then on uh, Olive Avenue, on the circulation element, what's Olive's uh, classification? It's a four-link uh, collector. Uh, 64 foot of right of way within an 64 feet of curb to curb within an 84 feet of right of way. And do we have policies in the circulation element that talk about uh, the number of, uh, of uh, driveway accesses to that that collector street? On major arterials, we try to minimize the openings and driveway openings, but not on a four lane collector per se. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Sure. Commissioner Jackal. Thank you. Um, I just wondered if some part in this process is that strip of Olive Avenue that goes along this property, is that going to be improved with sidewalks and so forth? The, uh, the north side of Olive, Olive, Olive Avenue that's actually abutting the project site will be improved. It will, there will be a sidewalk there. Uh, so it's uh, identified part of the tentative map for a five foot sidewalk to be included as part of the improvements. Okay, thank you. Sure. Commissioner Looney. Yeah, Patsy, on the northern boundary of the property, there is a, um, a Vista Irrigation District um, annexed area. Will that affect the building setbacks of those lots? Uh, no, it should not. Um, if I called the Vista Irrigation District, and uh, they just need to make sure that they pay an annexation fee to the Vista Irrigation fee to the Vista Irrigation District to clarify that area, but that does not affect in terms of uh, where you're measuring from the setback, it will still be from the PL. Okay, so. thank you. Uh, Ms. Chow, yes. under the site description, it talks, it states that the cell tower and, and the, uh, uh, the building and that existing home will remain. Is that, that is my understanding. Okay. And the, again, the applicant can verify that if that's the case. Okay. And then on the private streets, will they get um, Vista services like street sweeping, or is it that the general rule that the private streets don't get that, or how is that going to work? Yeah, they're actually private driveways in this particular case, so they're much uh, it, different than private streets. They're part of the project. There will be a, a association, or there will be covenants to cover the private maintenance of those okay. to be part of the subdivision. And the landscape landscape plans so it will be graded uh, of the tentative map it'll be graded and they'll put the landscaping in now and then at some point when it's appropriate for them they'll build houses correct that's true they will basically have to have the improvements uh, bonded for the uh, slope erosion control all that needs to be addressed prior to the uh, final map being recorded and at some point in the future maybe at the same time or maybe future after that uh, then the homes will be built on it, depending on what the schedule is from the applicant's perspective, too, so. All right, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Carroll, please. 
Thank you, Chairman. Uh, so there's three private driveways, but six driveways, three private streets on all of it, but six driveways, three driveways and three streets. I'm confused by the driveways that are shown on all of there's There's one in front of lot three. Then there's the, there's the driveway between lot three and the existing house. Then there's the one to the existing house. So there are three private driveways. The, uh, the, let me put this one here that has the, the highlights, I guess, of A, B, and C in that order from the left to the right. So basically you have a private uh, driveway, which is A, that's actually, let's see here. Bear with me for one second, please. I'm looking at so, sheet two of two. Right, so private driveway A is actually serving lots uh, one and then two. And then lot three has its own driveway actually serving off of the Olive Avenue. So okay. on that one particular case anyways. And then lot five has its own driveway coming off of Olive. And lot four is a flag lot which is served by private driveway B. And private driveway C would be serving lots six and seven, and lot eight has its own driveway serving off of um, Olive directly. Okay, so six driveway or pavement or um, driveway aprons essentially on Olive. What the reason I want to verify that is lot eight and lot three, the grading doesn't really depict a driveway there. So is that? grading that would be later with the house construction? They've, yeah, this is more of a, that is my understanding. Right now it's kind of more of a conceptual, which will later be, have to be addressed when the homes are actually built or when the construction actually comes in. I'm sure they'll have to be reconfigured to meet that or to be um, addressing that entrance there. Well, it's just, it's just lots. nose and aim to a two to one slope, so I it's and we can ask the uh, the engineers in the audience, so we can ask them to further clarify that design if you wish to, to actually go into detail on that one. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Looney? I have the same question, so we'll okay. wait till the uh, engineer comes up. All right. I have, uh, for the public hearing, I have one speaker slip, and that is from um, Tom Fleming. Would you please come forward, give your name and address, please? Good evening, Chairman and members. Um, I live just like eight houses down Grapevine there, and the things that concern me the most are the number of driveways that you see that are actually going on to Ollie. If you go back to the view of what it is there now, out of Oceanside, Winter Drive comes on to, it gets into Olive. Grapevine gets on to Olive. Uh, there, right there. You can see where Winter comes down, Grapevine goes up. There are cars come flying out of Winter Drive trying to not get hit, making a left-hand turn, squealing tires often to get out. Uh, if we're turning on Grapevine left, we have the same problem. If you add six more driveways coming out right there in that one section, I know at one point the city had talked about putting a red light there at Grapevine. I don't know that that would help, to be honest with you, with that many. Uh, I think you need to find a solution to that many driveways that close to two major roads onto a major road. So, and with Emerald, the way traffic has gotten in the city as it is, Emerald is, is a madhouse getting up and down at most all day long. And so people are using Grapevine as a thoroughfare to go up and down to cut through. So the traffic has just ex exploded through there. Uh, as far as the rest of it, north and west, that's the same as what they're talking about. So it's a good description of, to be used because it's circled by what is gonna be there. So. I'm, I'm for it in general, it's just, I think we need to work out the, the driveways. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Ardolino or Mr. Tapzan, 
do either one of you wish to come up and, and discuss the driveway issue? Good evening, commissioners. My name is Lloyd Topsand. I live at 1505 Olive Avenue. Uh, I also live in the house that's going to be remaining there. And uh, my family and my daughter absolutely love that property. We've lived there uh, for the last uh, four years. Um, as far as the, the driveways are concerned, uh, the reason why there is that many driveways coming out in the street is originally we wanted to put the driveways all off of those three uh, main driveways that go up the property. But there was some uh, uh, requirement for us to put one of those driveways on the street, and that's uh, why they're like that. Uh, we would actually prefer to have less driveways going to all, onto all of if, if, if it would be feasible. But I guess that's something I'd have to talk further with Patsy about. So hopefully that answers your question. Commissioner Looney? <laughs> I don't think so. So did the city have a requirement that l asked the applicant to put additional drive cuts or curb cuts onto the um, individual lots on lot three and lot eight? There is a particular requirement in our code that talks about that if you have three or more lots being served off of, it would be then you have to be considered a private street. And a private street standard would be different than a private driveway. It would be much wider. There would be all kinds of improvements for utility easements. And so the widths would actually increase incrementally and more drastically than what you see here. So at the time, I think design-wise, is trying to minimize impacts and also trying to figure out what would be the best uh, scenario. And so we went through multiple iterations with engineering staff and land development staff and uh, Mr. Topzen's engineer and their their consultants and trying to figure out what's the best way. And I think what you see in front of you is the best design in terms of trying to minimize pavement and, or, you know, the width or the increase, I guess, in the becoming a private street where right now we have a private driveway situation. The, the number of curb cuts on the other side of the street are numerous. I mean, they go basically from Emerald down to, um, to Melrose, and you've got individual homes with individual curb cuts that go right out on the street. It would be nice to have those come off the other drives, but what is proposed is no different than what's, what's that? along that whole strip along Olive. So, um, is Brian, Brian, are you, yeah. Um, is there a reason why in your conceptual grading plan you didn't show the grading some, for the individual yeah, driveways? for the individual curb cuts? Well, part of it came back to the concept that because there is such a large elevation difference, there are other opportunities in terms of the grading and also pot potentially the architecture that there's like nearly a 10-foot vertical difference that there, the future homeowner might want to do site adaptive architecture and have a subterranean base or garage. So without trying to define the grading on spe specifically three and eight, it leaves that kind of open for when the architecture is presented to the city that that grading is assessed then as part of that application versus just trying to force a thoroughfare through there now. You really make it hard on the architect. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. Um, but we could, I can it, understand because, your Yeah, your it's, it, it, it leaves an opening for an opportunity for, uh -huh. for something outside of just standard driving a driveway up to the back of the lot and having a rear-loaded garage. This actually provides an opportunity to have something closer down to the street and maybe have an upper house that's on a higher level pad. So it could be done on three and eight either way, but without making that decision now, it'll be made with when architecture comes forward. Okay. Patsy, on the 24-foot drives, both on the east edge and on the west edge, how or what would be the minimum street dimension if those went to private streets versus driveways? The narrowest would be that you have to have a 35-foot easement in order to um, accommodate a private street. It'd be like a 24 within a 35, from my memory anyways. That would be the narrowest. Okay. That's all. Thanks. Commissioner Rossler, please. Don't go away. 
Um, <clears throat> I have the same concerns that Commissioner Looney does, um, and I, I'm really struggling with it. I, I would prefer to see you combine the driveways and make a private road, and I think they can be fit into the uh, land that you've set aside for, for access. Um, I want to know also, um, does the applicant, is the applicant going to build the homes? Uh, are they going to sell the lots off individually to, to, for uh, spec building? Um, How is that going to be handled? Um, and Lloyd can confirm this, but from my understanding, because his, his intention is to keep the home. It, and this, this is his property. And, and um, his intention, as far as I know, is to actually do a lot sales program where he sells them off individually over time. Okay. There's All no right. intention to do a mass subdivision in... Um, something very intense because he's going to be living there. These okay. are going to be his neighbors. All right. So, and I'm sure if you want to. Yeah, to, to clarify, there, there's not any specific plan as far as the build out at this point. I mean, at this point, we're trying to accomplish the map. And, okay. And You've got a requirement for the landscaping and the drives to be maintained by a homeowners association mm -hmm. in the conditions of approval. Um, in the CCNRs that you're going to have for the property, are you going to set a minimum building size for, uh, they've got to, uh, as Ms. Chow said, they've got to conform to the R1 zoning standard. Correct. Are you going to have minimum sizes uh, and garage uh, uh, requirements inside the CCNRs when you sell the lots off? We will have some, some criteria for that, but as I said, we haven't really gotten to that point where we've gotten that specific yet. So okay. it would be just a, a hearsay if I was telling you that we've, we've determined that. So. Okay, let me look at my list of questions, make sure you don't sure, leave no, before no I... No problem. Um, okay, thank you very much. Appreciate your You're time. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. Um, commissioners, we have no other speaker slips. Um, other questions or want to render an opinion, um, make a motion. Commissioner Jackal, please. I'd like, I guess, to explore or ask Mr. Looney and, and Mr. Rossler and Mr. Carroll to explore um, if there really is a way to combine these driveways so we end up with fewer openings, entries onto Olive Avenue and not lose a lot of buildable land. Commissioner Carroll? Well, my opinion is there, there is enough room to do that. Um, you would be eliminating the, the 20 foot wide width and needing another seven at the existing 20 foot, eight foot easement, another seven at the other 28 foot easement to get your 35 and you would still have five feet of width left over and some type of elbow with a turnaround that would serve those northerly lots. I, I think it's pretty doable and without loss of pad area and uh, uh, really less expense uh, construction wise for as far as um, paving but maybe not I guess if, if pri private utilities have to be brought up through the now private road as opposed to utilities from the street is that what you're saying Patsy yeah there will have to be utility easements set up as part of the private streets to meet our standards or not section drawings for those private streets but the utilities uh, would have to go, well, there's already sewer extending up to the north. That's correct. Wouldn't you still have to bring utilities up the private drive for two of the houses anyways? That's true. It's just that you have to have a designated utility easement area on the sides of the, uh, yes. the easement. So additional width will have to be created for that. And I guess it would just domino effect on having to create that for all of the three lots that are being served by that private street. The fire department require fire hydrants to be placed closer to the structure? Or is the 100, well, we've got the, 300 feet total property depth. Right, so as long as they have 150 foot to be able to reach the particular buildings, they should be fine. So, but they may have Again, they've obviously were one of the disciplines that reviewed, so this actually worked for fire the way it's presented. Okay. 
usually the fire department requires either five or 600 feet from the fire hydrant to the structure. So we should be fine on that. Is there a way to where the properties can be or the property boundaries can be adjusted to where we could eliminate two of the three drives going. If we could eliminate drive to lot three and to lot eight, lot four, I think, that we live with, but it, somehow we could just get those two of the three coming in off those other drives. And is there a way to where we can make an, some type of an exception where the um, there wouldn't have to be the utilities easements brought up. What happens if, and maybe this is, goes back to Brian, Brian, could we do a property boundary such that we grant, just forget with lot seven and lot six, an easement across lot eight to where we wouldn't have to bring those utilities all the way up? Well, in terms of a couple different things. Could um, you get closer to the mic, please, oh, Brian? Excuse Thank me. Um, in order to introduce the, the private street designation in, in, or, in terms of uh, widening the, what would be private driveway C and also private driveway A, to, for, like, the, whole, the whole street would, the whole drive would become the private street, meaning it would take an additional seven feet from three, two, and one, or three and two, to serve one, and then eight and seven to serve six. There isn't way, a way to really terminate the private street ahead of the, the final terminus of those lots. And then furthermore, as a result of the, uh, like in, in the private driveway B, it's kind of locked in place based on the contractual negotiations of the owner in the Verizon uh, uh, cell tower. So that's locked in anyways. That, that easement for that access for the maintain, maintenance of that cell tower is kind of out, of out of place. So you can't use B to redistribute to either A or C without taking area away from 7 and 8, 2 and 3. And 5 is largely predicated on the existing house itself. Okay. So we're, we're really constrained in terms of maintaining the house, maintaining the, the, the arrangements with Verizon, and then at the same time not just taking away a swath of two, three, seven, and eight, simply for the, the purposes of eliminating two curb cuts. So by eliminating two curb cuts, you've now just created a seven, oh, a additionally seven foot wider private streets, even though fire only requires 24 for the serving of those three homes. Mm -hmm. So if the private street designation had a little more flexibility as related to fire code, absolutely. Like we would absolutely <laughs> take, take eight off of C and three off of A, but once you throw them into the mix, the site plan falls apart. And really keeping the house drives this whole site plan. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Thanks, Brian. Commissioner Rossler. I'm, I'm still not completely understanding why this can't be done. But when I first looked at this, I, I couldn't see a reason why you couldn't combine driveways B and, and C into one street, and it seems like there's a total uh, pavement with the 44 feet between the two, the two drives, and if we've got 35 feet as our minimum uh, requirement, you'd still save right away. But, uh, but I know the effort that goes into designing these things and uh, the myriad of, of uh, balls that are up in the air trying to balance everything, so, um, I would, I would prefer to see, at a minimum, I would prefer to see lot three have access off of driveway A. I would prefer to see lot eight have access off of driveway C. And the, the existing house's driveway also having access off of drive A. Um, mm -hmm. at, at a minimum, that's what I, I, I would think that we would, this is a, uh, again, this is a semi-legislative uh, action that we have tonight. Uh, we're going to be making a recommendation to the City Council on, on how all of these things should come out. And so, at a minimum, I, I think that's what our recommendation to the City Council should be. Chairman Kramer. 
May I? Yeah, oh, please, just please. providing some comment from staff's perspective. Um, the one thing as far as modifying some of the, the access points from three and eight and so forth, and I guess the domino effect of that, I guess a thing that comes to my mind from a staff's perspective is we have to have a minimum net lot area for these lots at 10,000 square feet for the R1 zone. Some of these are pretty close to 10,000, and I'm not sure what that will end up doing to the mix of doing you know, A to B to C to what have you, um, which could create some unintended consequences related to that. And, and I stress that only because um, we've been through many iterations of this project, designing the entrances, the driveways this versus the street throughout the, the years that the, the project has been in the pipeline. Um, and also because we have to deal with stormwater issues, the detentions and where they're located. So there, there's a myriad of issues that are competing with each other and how the design is shown and presented here. So I just wanted to throw some information based on how staff looks at these, that it's unfortunately is not one thing versus another that is more important, but they're all equally important. So I'm just afraid that what that could do in terms of domino effect, especially related to the minimum lot size requirement. That's it, thank you. So if we have a 10,000 square foot minimum lot? Correct, per the R1 zone. That would be the net. And some of these are like 10,080, so it's pretty close. And I don't know what it would be. Obviously, we could take a look at that and see how that would come out. But without doing the math and all the calculations and all the access points and what that does in domino effect, uh, I think it would be hard for us to tell you that actually it could work, so I'm not sure. It's what kind it, of a... Speaking in conceptual terms here, what if path, what if drive C mm -hmm. was eliminated and we widen drive B to where we could access lots six, seven, and eight from drive B? We've already got a hammerhead on lot four, mm -hmm. so we could easily access lot six. We've got all the fire turnaround requirements met. They would have to be increased in width because now that driveway is serving more than one lot. Uh, I think a 16-foot driveway can serve two lots. So if we go, if we're serving four lots, then I think it's got to go to 20 feet, I think. If you're serving four lots, actually, we'd be, we would have to be meeting whatever the private standard width is. But we would still be well over the 10,000 feet because the area, the lot areas of lot six and seven, mm -hmm. that would be, that are now that flag dedicated for a driveway, that is now becoming, that could share that driveway B. And so you'd only really be in putting street improvements or site utilities up that one drive and thereby eliminating two drives onto all of. Mm -hmm. And I guess I would have to defer to the engineer to see if that's a possibility okay. in their mind. Brian, do you think that can work? Off the top of my head, considering how many hours a little, we're spent. A little closer to the mic, yes, please. Sorry, sorry. Um, off the top of my head, I can't recall why that could not be done. Um, only because this site plan's been locked for going on three or four years and seven or eight versions of stormwater permits later. Yeah, I can't recall exactly why we can't mirror those lots and actually merge it and combine the mm -hmm. use. It will have to be a private street. Um, I don't know if the private street would have to terminate in a cul-de-sac or if it could terminate in a hammerhead. If it has to terminate in a cul-de-sac, the, the, the property, the project will fail. Does it have to terminate in a cul-de-sac? It would have to be in a cul-de-sac. Okay, in street. that instance, we don't meet in a lot of area, we lose lots. Because the, uh, the, the, it won't, the fire axis alone is, for, for a cul-de-sac, is three times the size of a hammerhead. 
in the net area reduction on parcel four in is is would be quite extensive and also six because you'd be actually taking more out of six than four without studying it further i can't say for sure absolutely that it would fail but a cul-de-sac private street would be a would be a severe impact and i can't say that it'll work was a cul-de-sac 60 feet in diameter it's 72 I think it's part part of of minimum that. plus okay. parkways you're now looking at 82 no 92 so ni a 92 foot oh. wide improvement in with, when lots are only 100 by 150. and if we go to a public or if a private street then the property boundary for lot four is significantly reduced because right now that flag is calculated into the 17,000 net Correct. square feet okay Yeah, it's it, like as soon as you take one turn, something something else falls off. So, Um, I have another speaker slip. Helmut Kiffman, if you'll please come forward, state your name, give your address, please. Good evening. Helmut Kiffman, 1174 High Meadows, Lucadia. Uh, <clears throat> my nephew Lloyd and I are partners on this property, and uh, I really appreciate you considering this and looking at it very carefully. Uh, I'm sure you want the very best for the community, and we, we do also. We spent a lot of time trying to figure this thing out. First time we went to talk to the city engineer, he said, oh, I, I, I was afraid you were gonna come in, come in here and want to, want to put a cul-de-sac into that property. I'm glad you didn't. So uh, there's so many little constraints. For example, you can't serve more than three houses with one driveway, you can't serve four. Okay? So we went back and forth on this many, many times, and I can't tell you we have the perfect solution but in our minds, it's a pretty good one. <clears throat> one of the things we're trying to accomplish with this is not really impact anything. We want it to be light. In other words, the less pavement, the better, as long as you get the safety in there. And um, uh, you, I can appreciate your, all, your concern about this, but w one thought process is there's going to be <clears throat> eight families here. And whether they come to the street at one location or two locations or three locations, it's the same number of trips. And um, a redesign of this would probably take four to six months. Um, I, I believe if you, if, if, if you feel it's a reasonable solution but not the perfect solution, I would appreciate having your support. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Carroll, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to skip the other comments I had, but I had a question that it, regarding the net area. Is that typical to include the flag lot in the net area, the, the flag portion of a lot? Is that typically how it's calculated? You have in a flat, and as part of the code, when it's a certain width or certain dimension, it actually has to be deducted out of the total. So whatever the net result is, we'd have to not account for that uh, pole portion, if we call that way, of the flag lot. So for instance, lot four, that net area is going uh, to just the, the rectangle part and not the flag part. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I believe that is that if I'm looking at the dimensions here, which is a 20 foot um, width of private driveway B, that would actually be, well, actually not, that is not deducting that. So that is included in the, uh, the net, the 17,803. 
Okay. Um, <clears throat> but then on lot one, it looks like the flag is based on those 14,000 and 11,000, looks like it's probably subtracted from the net. Correct. Area. Yeah, to show the net of 11,722. Boy, that seems like a discrepancy to me. It's the, due to the width of the actual private driveway exceeding the, uh, that's shown at 28, because you've got a 28 foot driveway versus a 20 foot. So anything that's over that, the 20 feet I'm saying. Okay. Commissioner Rossler. Staff is been through, it uh, seems like a, a number of iterations on the, on the project. You guys are comfortable with it. You're recommending to us that, that we recommend approval. That is correct. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to render an opinion and see what happens. I, I like what you're trying to do. Um, I've been on your property, sir, uh, when it was up for sale. I must have been prior to you buying it, and the view from up there is magnificent when you're at the top. Um, but I also, and I apologize to Mr. Fleming, I use grapevine to escape um, olive down by the schools. So. Even just this morning, as I was turning left from Olive onto Grapevine, someone scoots from winter. And um, so I, I understand and I can see that we're going to have many more people all hitting that same area at the same time. So for that reason, um, as the design stands, I, I don't care for it and I couldn't support it because I think it is going to hurt that area and not that the extra cars are going to impact it, but I think you have the high probability of cars all reaching that um, olive winter grapevine all at the same time, and, and it's a disaster waiting to happen. So that's my opinion. Uh, Commissioner Gerritsen, please. Well, I'm gonna recommend approval, and uh, so that's my recommendation that we approve it based on staff recommendation. That's the motion. Uh, including the addition, there was a change in one of the- uh, Yes. An engineering condition. Addition. Yes. Commissioner Looney. And I would second it. Commissioner Carroll. Oh, it's already got that. It's already second, but um, just for further discussion, I think you know there's gonna be the same amount of cars either way. I think we all saw that, man, it would have been nice if we could have cleaned it up a little bit and made it, uh, a little bit less busy there, but I don't think it's gonna be a huge impact difference one way or the other if we were to lose a couple of driveways or combine, not losing driveways, but combining a couple of uh, driveways. Uh, so, you know, it's not a deal breaker for me. I think it was worth exploring though, and I, I, I take the applicant and uh, his engineer uh, at their word that they've um, made an effort to uh, do the best they could. Okay, uh, with that said, uh, commissioners, I close the public hearing and please vote. Please let the record show that uh, the item passes with Commissioner Kramer um, voting no against it. Thank you. Uh, students, it's now a good time to come up if you want us to sign off your documentation.
Yeah, set. Mm -hmm. Oh, almost. No, no. Okay, we're ready to begin our second item, which is an early design review. Um, commissioners, before we start, the format that we will use will be our standard format for design reviews in that staff will make the, the presentation, then the applicant, if he wishes to uh, participate, may give his presentation. Then we will have uh, the public provide their input, and then the commissioners will make comments regarding the site grading, architecture, parking, etc. With that said, Mr. Ressler, will you get us all started? So thank you, Chairman, members of Planning Commission. Uh, the project before you tonight is an early design review for the 1525 Buena Vista Drive project. The application number is P16-0481. Can you also tell us, uh, as being a um, early design review, what the criteria is and what our job is for this evening? Sure. Yeah, I was just getting into that right now, as a matter of fact. Um, so the purpose of the early design review is to provide the Planning Commission an opportunity to review initial uh, proposals and to allow the Planning Commission to provide comment directly to the applicant. Um, the proposal before you tonight hasn't been vetted through the city departments. The plans have not been uh, distributed to all the other disciplines. So at this point, everything is uh, at an early stage. Um, the applicant will be here to uh, provide you specific answers to any questions regarding to design, site layout, and so forth. Um, there won't be a formal vote tonight, and there won't be a formal action since it's an early design review. Thank you. Um, staff has received a preliminary proposal uh, to develop 45 detached condominium units on 
eight acres. Uh, the site is located on the west side of Buena Vista Drive, north of South Melrose Drive. The site is currently developed with the West Coast Baptist Church. Here's an aerial of the site. Um, again, the site is 4.8 acres. It's one legal lot, and it's currently developed with the West Coast Baptist Church. Um, staff does note that the city boundary does run along the northerly edge of the site as well. Surrounding land uses, uh, properties to the east and to the north are developed with single family homes as well as used for agricultural purposes. Property to the west uh, is developed with apartment complex and to the south are detached condominiums. The current general plan land use designation for the site is medium density residential. The medium density residential land use allows for a maximum density of 10 dwelling units per acre. Current zoning for the site is E1, estate residential. The E1 zone would allow one single family home per half acre. As part of this proposal, the applicant would be requesting a zone change, which would change the zoning from E1, a state residential, to RM10, which is a multifamily residential zone. Um, on June 28, 2016, uh, the planning, or excuse me, the city council had a discussion regarding the proposed zone change. And at the conclusion of that discussion, the city council directed the uh, applicant to move forward with their request. Um, in addition, the city council also requested additional open space area be provided within that proposed development. The proposed project would include a zone change, a site development plan, condominium housing permit, tentative subdivision map, a CEQA review, as well as a landscape review. Uh, the project uh, includes 45 detached condominium units. The proposed density would be approximately 9.4 dwelling units per acre. Each townhome uh, or detached condo would include a two-car garage. Uh, the project makeup includes 14 three-bedroom units and 31 four-bedroom units. The 4.8-acre site would be developed with 45 two-story detached condominiums. The, the submitted site plan indicates the site would maintain a total of 195 parking spaces, which exceeds the citywide detached condominium parking standard by 15 parking spaces. Um, staff notes that the detached condominium parking standard is four parking spaces per dwelling unit. The site amenities identified within the submitted site plan include a dining terrace, an active play area, as well as individual private rear yards. Architecturally, the project has been designed around a uh, Monterey Spanish architectural style. The condominiums would be two stories and maintain hip and gable style roofs. Um, the stucco's exterior would be enhanced with vertical and horizontal siding, brick veneer, arched openings, grid pattern windows, as well as uh, wrought iron railing elements. Each condominium would maintain a sectional two-car garage door that would face the interior street system. Condominiums would range in size from 1180, or excuse me, 1,822 square feet to 2,387 square feet, and those would be three and four bedroom condominiums. Uh, each unit would also maintain a two car garage. With that, staff is recommending the Planning Commission provide comment directly to the applicant related to the design of the project. The applicant, MLC Holdings Incorporated, are here to provide you with a brief presentation. At the conclusion of that presentation, staff as well as the applicant will be here to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Perfect. Um, the applicant, you're more than welcome to come up and give your presentation. Good evening. Thank you for the time to present our project this evening, um, Chair Kramer and members of the commission. Uh, my name is Lester Tucker. I'm the Vice President of Forward Planning for MLC Holdings. Not being a uh, household name per se, MLC Holdings actually is a wholly owned subsidiary of a national public builder, Meritage Homes. MLC is 
Meritage Land Company to take the uh, creativity of a home builder to figure that one out. Um, Meritage is a uh, $2 billion a year public builder. We're in 17 different states. We're building 230 communities uh, at present. Uh, we have uh, 26 communities in Southern California alone with a couple within a few minutes driving distance from here, including Quintessa. Uh, I'd offer to take any any members through Quintessa if you'd like to see the quality of the homes that we build. We're very proud of the homes that we build, the neighborhoods that we create, and uh, our homeowners are proud to own them as well. Um, just a few brief comments. I don't want to duplicate or otherwise repeat things that uh, staff has said. I would like to uh, point out that um, thank staff uh, for working so hard over the past few months with us in uh, considering the design of this community in the RM zone, the multifamily zone, in a single family detached looking, although it's mapped as a condominium. But um, both uh, Mike uh, and Mr. Connolly have been uh, very helpful in guiding us. Uh, they've been firm, but by all measure, uh, very fair with us as well. So thank you, staff. Um, our vision of the project is, is to provide attainable single family new homes, um, both for first time buyers, young families, as well as for people who are moving down to a more coastal location, possibly from southern Riverside County and Temecula or other areas of inland San Diego County. Um, the in town kind of move down close to the beach, close to the kids. Um, our product offering, as, as uh, Mr. Ressler had mentioned, is uh, three floor plans ranging in square footage from 1,800 to roughly 2,300 square feet with three and four bedrooms. Uh, they do all include two-car side-by-side garages as well as two-car driveways. So it's a very traditional feel. Um, the, the floor plans are uh, what I would call modern floor plans that um, possibly you have seen in models with great room layouts, large kitchens, areas that are focused into indoor-outdoor living on the ground floor, nice master suites, etc. cetera. Um, the look of the community, we, we, we worked with staff to try and make it a traditional single-family detached looking community that people are very familiar with and comfortable in um, to avoid the feel of a high-density condominium project where you have uh, a lot of concern over massing uh, multiple cars and those kind of things. So we have tried to make it loose and provide ample open space. Um, I will note the, the community does comply with all the requirements as designed for the RM zone. So we are not seeking any variances whatsoever from the RM zone. Uh, building height, parking, open space, private open space, all are provided well above the minimums in the design. Um, Let's see here. The open space includes, uh, as, as Mike had mentioned, the dining terrace. That's code for barbecues and tables. Um, plenty of, of room for the kiddos and dogs to, to get the wiggles out and to really have a nice little birthday party or family barbecue or whatever you may have in your small community area. Also includes a nice pergola and doggy stations. Pet-friendly communities are something that we've become accustomed to doing. Um, people really like that little I don't know, they carry the dogs around now. Have you seen that? Um, it's not a purse dog anymore. Um, we, we're focusing on obviously the drought tolerant landscape, but also a very nice street scene, uh, characteristic of the rural nature of the community now. Uh, split rail fencing is planned along the edge of Buena Vista, as well as pedestrian connectivity directly to Buena Vista Drive. Uh, for the residents and children to be able to get out on Buena Vista and walk to school if they so chose. Um, overall, again, it's 45 homes. Uh, the parking ratio is uh, 4.3 per home. Um, and the architectural is very familiar. Monterey and uh, Spanish styles with the accoutrement of architectural accents that Mike had mentioned previously. Rather than proceeding with a long dialogue, I'm really interested in comments and observations, uh, both from council as well as from the public. We're very focused on making sure that we fit in with, with the communities in which we build, and so I look forward to all of your feedback and questions. I also have my consultant team here if there's anything technical that requires initials behind your name to answer. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right.
Before we begin, I uh, just wanted to uh, uh, bring to your um, attention, uh, Commissioners, that on the dais tonight was an email from Teresa Sheely, and she's expressing her um, opposition, and she's concerned about the amount of traffic um, that's going to be come out because of these homes being so close to the Albertsons and the high school. So um, that will become part of our official record for this evening. Okay, from the public, let's see. Pastor Clark, did you wish to speak or you want to wait till later or come on up? Thank you, Council. Um, <clears throat> my name is Philip Clark. I'm the pastor of West Coast Baptist Church. We have been at this location for 43 years. Um, I have a lot of emotional ties to this property. My wife and I were the first couple married in that church. My father was the first pastor. Matter of fact, the street behind us, Wesley Way, is named after my father. And uh, <clears throat> this was a hard decision for us. The church, if you can believe it, a church voted unanimously for this. And that's unheard of in church life. <laughs> and uh, in all my years, I've never seen it before. And we just have a strong, strong urge that, that this is the right thing. As far as the traffic, I would say that a Christian school and a church draws more traffic than the few homes that are going to be there. Because we have a Christian school everyday meeting, cars coming for that. As well as Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, we have Bible, Bible college there as well. So it's, it's busy. We need to move and we need, we need more classrooms. I've worked with you, you know, with a problem we had there in the past with big, big struggles and issues. And it's just cost prohibitive to add on there when we can buy an existing building uh, that would do the better job with less money. So it helps our church. But I also believe it helps the community. Our church is a really, really strong military church. I didn't plan it that way, but that's what's happened. We have uh, over 40% uh, active duty, sometimes 60% active duty. And uh, if you're sitting in my church, you either were a Marine or you are a Marine or a sailor. We have a few of them around. Uh, so we really urge if, if the commission would really uh, get behind this project. And I think it would be good for Vista, really good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, Pastor, you're going to relocate your. Yeah, here I am. So, you're going to relocate your church then? That's the plan? Yes, ma'am. Good. Thank you. Hopefully, right here. Yes, we hope so too. Claudia Falk? State your name, give your address, please. My name is Claudia Falk. I live at 1357 Fern Place, which is just down the street and around the corner. Um, I've lived there for almost 30 years and I've seen a lot of changes and I understand the need for affordable housing and I guess my concern is um, the housing, I think there's about 28 houses on Wesley Way, which is right next door to this, and they definitely have inadequate parking. I'm not sure what they're parking. I've never really driven down the street, but I know that a lot of them park on Buena Vista, which makes it it's a very narrow street. and um, I'm kind of concerned about that. I know they had ended up putting signs and stopping people parking, and now they allow them in, in the evening. So, I mean, I understand with a three- and four-bedroom unit, you're going to have more drivers in the long run, I'm sure. Um, so I'm concerned about the, the parking, because it sounds like there's two in each garage and then two in each driveway, but where I'm, will there be street parking within the whatever the whole complex complex there's the word I'm looking for yeah um because you know like again Buena Vista is very narrow and even if I, I could tell from the drawings you know because I know right now the Baptist street has or Baptist church has um grass that goes out kind of far beyond the um the sidewalk that Wesley Way's houses have in front of them on Buena Vista. So I assume that they'll straighten that part out. And that leads me to my next um, concern is Buena Vista has that really terrible curve in it. And I was wondering if that is going to be addressed at all. And I know it's in the county because I live in the county too. 
but traffic is not going to be just contained in that one area. They're not going to just go out to Melrose to turn, you know, to the right and go out that way because people will go left and that that curve, it's a blind curve. People drive on the wrong side of the street. You come out of our street fern places just a little beyond it. So we, you know, I'm concerned. At least they've got it banked the right way. When we first lived there, it was banked the wrong way and at least one car a month would fly off the edge there and be overturned. And so at least they've done that. But if they could straighten that out, that would, I think, you know, make it a much safer driving experience for everyone. Okay, so thank you thank for your you. comments. Eloise Janet Meyer. Meyer. I'm Eloise Janet Meyer. I live at 1429 Fern Place, which is right next door to Ms. Mrs. Falk. Um, my, my concerns are pretty much similar and or like hers, but I do want to stress the fact that Buena Vista is a very narrow road. It has no curbs, and the curve that Ms. Falk mentioned is very sharp. I drive that from Fern Place to Melrose all the time. I have lived on Fern Place since 19... Uh, 49. So I've lived there a long time. And my house overlooks the church that's there, so I can see the condos when they are built. <clears throat> but with that many bedrooms, I can't imagine 45 houses on a four, less than five acre lot. That a bit, that shocks me because I'm zoned for one house, for one acre. And this is amazing to me. It's always been kind of a of a rural area, as the pastor did mention. And I'm not basically opposed to the uh, development of that parcel, but I'm extremely concerned about the traffic. And there is absolutely no possibility of parking any of those vehicles that might be from that development on Buena Vista, or you cannot get through Buena Vista. It's, it's a terrible street, and uh, as I say, I drive it all the time, and it's, it's just a big concern. Also, which hasn't been mentioned, is the fact that uh, Rancho Buena Vista High School is right in that area, and when, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a <clears throat> rough throat, excuse me, um, when high school is out, it's probably the same way in the morning, but I'm not out at the time high school starts in the morning. But when high school is out in the afternoon, I have a hard time, if I want to make a left turn out of Fern Place, getting into the street because the high school kids are taking that street. Now, I grant you that they also plug up Melrose, but a lot of them are on Buena Vista when school is out. So that street is really something that needs to be addressed and very seriously so in my, in my opinion. And I thank you for listening. Thank you. Um, Mike Havis. My name is Mike Havis. I reside at 1633 Wesley Way. I'm representing the Buena Vista Colony Homeowners Association. Good evening, Chairman Kramer, Vice Chair, and Commissioners. Uh, we definitely have some concerns and questions regarding this development. And I would preface the, my remarks by saying we're for any development, any activity that enhances the property values of our residences or, and or enhances the quality of life of our neighborhood. So far, from what I've seen, I had an opportunity to study this on my own computer. Yes, it's a little bit smaller, but uh, they haven't proved to me this is going to do any of that. We have approximately 26 residences on our street. There's 16 parking spots on the street, less two because those two are in front of mailboxes, so they're rarely used. There's approximately 10 parking spots on uh, Buena Vista. Even with that, and with our homes meeting code, we don't have any room 
for anybody to come there and park. I'm going to encourage every one of you, including every one of the people here from the developers and staff, on the way home tonight to drive down Buena Vista and our street and try and park and visit me or anybody else. I have a couple questions. We want to know what the parking spots are that these folks are referring to. Is there a parking lot? I couldn't find it. The way it's zoned now makes sense. The way it's going to be zoned, we can't figure that one out. Also, the CCNRs. Are the CCNRs regarding the garages going to enforce that cars are to be parked in the garages? So that's how they're going to get their four parking spots, because in real life, it doesn't work that way. People put their belongings in the garage, put their cars out on the street, and maybe one or two on a drive. Also, what are the CCRs regarding renting? If they're going to rent out a four-bedroom house to four different individuals, they're going to have a lot more cars than they anticipate for parking. We also want to know what the prices are. So again, I would encourage everyone to think about this. Yeah, it sounds great. We're all for anything that will help. But think about us on Wesley Way. If you can throw up. Do you have a, a view you can throw up, sir? Do you have a view of you can throw up of Wesley Way? Um, the street view? Area. Yeah. Probably. You can see our, right there. You can see our street. It makes sense for these folks to talk to us. They can contact our board. We'd be happy to talk to them. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Kathy Bagwell, please. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Kathy Bagwell. I reside at 1862 Turnberry Drive in Vista. Um, I'm here this evening representing South Vista Communities. We did meet with a um, representative from, um, I'll call it Meritage Homes, uh, on January 19th without Stephanie Jekyll's present. And we appreciated the opportunity uh, to learn some of the specifics of the proposed development. And we provided Mr. Brady with um, our candid input, which um, are familiar topics that have been brought up about other projects in VISTA. Uh, we like that this uh, proposed development is for single family detached condo homes, as we feel that would be a better fit for the area than attached units or apartments. Um, but what is of concern um, is the request for the zoning change that is going to um, allow for 10 units per acre. We realize that builders do need to make the money off of the building. We understand all that. But we do understand the community's needs for people to speak up on behalf as far as density. So our concerns and suggestions are the following. We feel that 45 homes will be too dense for the building site and the area. We suggest reducing that number. Uh, I leave it to you to suggest, but looking at the screen up there, um, I did a little bit of looking myself, and the first three that are really close to Buena Vista, those I think should be eliminated. I would suggest the two that are by the park, that is rather a small park for amenities. And then, um, personally, I would take out the two on each end of the, the far end there. Um, because I think that there really still is more need for, number one, setback from Buena Vista, which could also allow for some additional landscaping, which will soften the look of a, of a um, project. And um, I think we, they still do need more space for um, dedicated dog park. Uh, uh, it was stated that there is going to be room for the dogs, but I don't see that that's going to be quite as much as they should have. And play area for um, kids and uh, adults. And then also the fewer homes would allow more on-site parking spaces. Um, the builder could certainly speak to. I was under the impression that there would be one side of the private streets that there would be designated for parking, but they can speak to that, so that might answer the earlier question. However, we know that there's never enough parking, and Buena Vista is not going to be a place for them to park. So there really needs to be more um, parking. So lowering down the number reasonably of units could help achieve that. 
Um, we'd also like the architecture and landscape to help reflect the rural area because as you go on up Buena Vista, um, it really is a very rural atmosphere. And lastly, uh, there's definitely serious traffic issues that must be mitigated. Um, as it's been stated, it's a two-lane road with line of sight concerns. A speed is a big issue along there, as well as the fact that Buena Vista is used a lot for people that cut through over to Mar Vista and the 78. Um, this is a unique area of Vista. It is rural in nature. Um, ideally, it would be nice if it could stay a state residential, but that is your decision in the city council to meet the needs of housing in the area. We understand that. Um, so we can't have always what we would like to have. Um, but at least can we minimize the adverse impact to the surrounding area. Thank you very much for your time and look forward to your discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Nikki Hobson, please. I'm getting slower by the day. <laughs> Good evening, commissioners. Thank you very much for uh, allowing me to speak. Um, first of all, the big plus about this project is that it's condos and not apartments. We like condos where people own their home, they put roots down in the community, and they are good citizens. So that is a huge plus. Uh, and in fact, there's a lot of good things about this project. But of course, I have a few suggestions to make it even better, which I hope the developer will consider. I agree with the previous speaker, it's very dense, and it would be awfully nice if they could reduce the number of units by eight or 10 and allow a little more open space and space for amenities. Traffic on, on, in that area is, is really bad, and especially on Buena Vista. Buena Vista, once you get past the, the shopping center, it, become, it's, it becomes a really narrow two-lane road that's curvy and hilly, and you really can't see where you're going and who's coming at you. So uh, I don't know if there's a possibility of, of widening the road, but uh, traffic on, on that road is, is dangerous and needs to be considered. Also, uh, and, and I, the, the developer may be planning this already, but if they are not, sidewalks along Buena Vista down to Melrose should be added because they're going to have pedestrians going to the, to the shops and to the restaurants, kids going walking to their schools, and so there is need for safe pedestrian passage. Uh, I'll echo the, the uh, sentiments of the previous speaker about parking. There's never enough parking, and uh, in, in this case, what I fear is that People who live in the, in, the, uh, in, in the development who have more cars than they have parking places, they're going to be going across and using commercial, the commercial parking places that is going to irritate our merchants. So I think that that's a potential problem that you may run into, and it would be nice to head it off at the pass if we can. I understand that, that some of the schools in the area are not accepting additional students. Now, I don't know if you've considered that, but where are the kids gonna go to school? Rancho Buena Vista, I think, is fine, but the middle school and the elementary schools are crowded, and, and in fact, I have heard that some of them are not accepting new students. So I, that is an issue that I think that both the developer and the city staff should be investigating. And back to my original point, there is a lot good about this project, but it can be so much better. So I thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you, Ms. Hobson. Joseph Robbins, please. Uh, Chairman Kramer, my name is Joseph Robbins. I live at um, 1941 Casablanca in the Mallorca subdivision directly behind this development, proposed development. And uh, I'm concerned by the, uh, what strikes me is the density that far back into that rural area. 
in last month, the, uh, count, the commission and the council approved a 47 unit condominium down behind Burger King, which uses the same street, same intersection. And then we're gonna add another 45 units in here. I'm, uh, when I look at the master plan, the 2030 city plan area, it's for low density residential use back through there. And this does not strike me as low density at all. This strikes me as uh, pretty well maxed out. I'm concerned uh, just from a, I've lived in tw for 25 years on Casablanca, so I've watched it go from families that mature to all the teenagers driving cars, to, and we're in three car garages and we're taxed to the max for parking. We overflow out onto Oak Glen then those families circulate out. We get new kids, we get families with young kids, it goes over again. But the truth is we're, we're actually looking at 166 potential parks in this place with that many bedrooms. And we actually have 90. So there's gonna be a 70, there could be 76 parking spots on a shortfall in the development that size. And I just don't see being able to put that many cars anywhere over there. On Buena, on Buena Vista. It is, uh, we were late here tonight because somebody decided to park an RV and we wanted to drive by the site. And we couldn't have had to take turns getting around an RV parked over there. So it's a very, very, very narrow street. It's twisty, windy to points that have been made previously. So I would just ask that that be uh, looked at seriously. I, I understand it needs to be developed, but I think it needs to be developed to a thinner degree or a lower density degree. Thank you. Thank you. Martha, Martha Bergman, please. Good evening, my name is Martha Bergman and I live at 1945 Casablanca Court. And a lot of the concerns that uh, I have have already been mentioned. And I just do think uh, parking will be horrendous for the people that live there. I don't think that on Buena Creek, the houses that will be close to that street will be very happy because it's very noisy. We can hear it from my house. I live behind the uh, cactus farm. Uh, I am concerned that the other project that's going on behind uh, Burger King, which we were never notified was gonna go in, you have 45, 47 houses and you have uh, so many people coming out at the same time and there's not even adequate space for them to come out. They're gonna come out through the Burger King parking lot. And I just think in the morning, if you live there, you do not go near uh, Albertsons or anywhere because of all the kids coming to school and they're overloaded with their parking because all the kids drive because they don't have busing. So it will be a great concern for the people who live there that they won't be able to get to their jobs because they'll either have to leave at six in the morning or whatever. So I, I, I think that it's a safety concern for Buena Creek because it is rural. And when you drive there, you have to be very careful because it is windy and people go fast. And um, I will say to the pastor that I will miss seeing the American flag from our house at night and listening to the kids on Wednesday. You could hear them all screaming and having a good time. So we will miss them as a, as a neighbor. But I think there's way too many homes that if you want this, that this is called rural Vista over there, it's unincorporated, that they should only have a few homes there, that this is way too many, plus the other 47, it will be a nightmare for all of the residents and all the people of Vista. So I thank you for your time. Thank you. Deborah Robbins, please. Deborah Robbins, I live at 1941 Casablanca. There's an advantage to being the latter part of the speaker because um, everybody has really already said and uh, spoke my concerns. I do feel that it's a risk to have that much development come in the small area that we're in. We're only here tonight because of a last minute notice of finding out that the petition had already gone through for the other 47 
uh, unit condominiums to go in across the street. So this, that was a concern initially, and now to find out that this is going in. The concern of the traffic, the concern of the safety of the kids. There's a lot of kids that are also hanging around after school. Melrose, during the time of 2.30 to 5.30, 6.30 at night, is just solid traffic. Again, it's just the safety and concern of the volume. Thank you. Thank you. Sherry Sleeve. Close. Uh, Sherry Sleeve. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, we live at 1419 Buena Vista Drive. And my first question, have you people driven down Buena Vista? Okay. Buena Vista has been a... Uh, well, Buena Vista, that whole area through there was owned half acre plus, is that correct? It's actually located within the county, but uh, uh, I think it is at a, a, a one acre, uh, one one home per acre. E. Okay. okay, I know there have been exceptions made for the half acre, that's why I was just going down there, but uh, we're on two and a half acres. We've lived there for a little over 30 years. And the problem is, and I think everybody's being very polite, because on both sides, this is monetary. Developer wants to see how many places he can get in there because that's where he makes his money. We, on the other hand, who live there, bought properties with the intentions that we would live there in a little bit better quality of life than a condominium situation. And we would expect to see our values increase as time goes on. As you bring in high density living into a rural um, situation where most people have acreage, it changes the dynamics a lot. And I'll tell you a real good example, if you've driven down Buena Vista, is look at the condominium complex that's being built down there right now. It's illegal. Nobody's doing anything about it. They're grading down there tonight. They're putting another septic system. They've got mobile, mobile homes and trailers, and they're packing them in there one after another, and nobody's doing anything. I've gone to the county and talked to them. They $100 fine. Okay? And that's all they're going to do is a $100 fine. Like I told them, if you've got 20 trailers in there and you're renting for $500 a piece, what's a $100 fine? So at the end of my driveway right now, we've got a trucking lot that moved in. Nobody's watching the zoning, but you're going to look at changing zoning now to accommodate high density on top of everything else. It really doesn't make a lot of sense. That's all I've got to say. Thank you. Okay, um, let's see. That was their last speaker slip. Um, so, commissioners. Mr. Ressler, would you, how do we want to do this? Let us make our comments and then catch them all between you and the applicant for responses? Yeah, you can provide his comment. If you have questions for the applicant, this is a perfect opportunity for them to come back up to the podium, maybe uh, provide a response based on the comments that were provided by the public, and then answer any questions you might have at this point. Got it. Okay. Commissioners, uh, comments and questions regarding site design and grading. Okay. Mr. Gerritsen, you got a site design and grading? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> Commissioner Carroll. Site design and grading? Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, okay, is parking part of, part of site design and grading? Nope, that, that comes later. That's a separate category. Yep. Okay. Got our little boxes here. I'll have to pass for now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Commissioner Rossler, site design and grading? Yes, please. Okay. Um, Mr. Tucker? Um, on the landscaping plan you gave us, uh, it indicates on the north and the west property line that there's going to be a masonry wall? Yes, okay. that's correct. And then on the, on the mm, grading plan tentative map exhibit, it shows a 12-foot uh, retaining wall in that northwest corner. Masonry wall going to sit on top of the retaining wall, or are they both the same? Be 
because the property will end up being higher than the adjacent property, it's intended to try and preserve some views for the homeowners there, so we would anticipate, and the fencing design has not been completed, but I would anticipate that that would be some kind of view fencing, ornamental iron or other. Okay, all right, that's my concern. I don't wanna see 22 feet of wall in, in that corner. I okay. concur. Okay, and- I don't wanna see 12 feet of retaining either, which I'm trying to address. Okay. Well, it's going um, to with be the adjacent property owner business. and possibly being able to make some grading allowances right. to reduce um, that height. In the cross, those two cross sections, it'd be uh, important for me to understand uh, what's to the west and to the north. So if you could extend those cross sections out uh, just a little bit, that would, uh, that would help with the information. Um, I would... I don't know if that's a site design. Um, you, you've heard tonight, is parking? Separate. <laughs> Separate, okay. Parking's and, its own animal. And um, uh, recreation? Uh, Separate. Separate, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, circulation? Yep, go ahead. Go ahead, okay. You're, you're proposing a 24 four foot wide uh, private drive. And um, I, I have a feeling your HOA is going to have a hard time keeping people from parking on that street. Uh, so I'd be interested on, on how you're going to address that. And if maybe the street shouldn't be widened, I think the 32 feet, which would allow for parking on one side. So, Yes, I can understand that concern. Uh, in reality, the, the, the site is designed, I believe, with a 24-foot drive aisle and a 9-foot parking. So the total section okay. would be 33. So th there will be there is on parking, on, parking one side, on one side. Yes, okay. there was discussion and concern from the neighbors about the on-site parking. Uh, there isn't any head-in parking stalls, but there are 15 parking stalls located along the Loop Street. Now, is that part of your 195 spaces that you said are provided? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, Okay. All right. That takes care of me for right now. Commissioner Jackal, site design and grading. Okay. Commissioner Looney. Thank you. Um, on Buena Vista, on the center island, so to speak, of the four um, different rows. Let's see. Yes, sir. The island area. Mm -hmm. okay. Understand. In that area there. Um, right now we've got... Um, a fence that's about 15 feet from the street curb. And it was brought up by one of the speakers. I think it might be beneficial to do something about those two lots to get them further away from the street. Um, because you're gonna have a five foot sidewalk, you're gonna have a utility easement, and then another five feet and you've got that fence. And I think on that section of the street, it might be beneficial to maybe negate those two units and create a larger landscape area. It also gives you a little bit more space to improve your community park. Um, and one of the other questions, will this have an HOA? Yes, sir. Okay. And that's all I have for the site design. Commissioner Gerritsen, site design and grading? Are sidewalks part of that? Sure. Okay. Um, why, why don't you have sidewalks on both sides of the street? I think that's a major safety issue that I brought up when I met with uh, Mr. Bradley. Yeah, I appreciate your comment. And uh, I'm glad to walk you through kind of the, the constraints on incorporating sidewalk on both sides of the street. As part of the current uh, general plan designation for this, this project calls for up to 10 units uh, per acre. It's been that way for some time in the general plan. The zoning is not in conformance with that correct currently, so our proposed zoning is 4.5. In order to try to make the project feasible and create a single family detached feel, even though this is um, mapped as a condominium, the width of the streets and the required setbacks from the adjacent property owners for instance, the adjacent property owners 
uh, just to our south here in the residential neighborhood. The distance between the property line and the homes that are being proposed is 20 feet. The distance between the loop street that we are proposing and the garages in the front is 20 feet, and then it's another, uh, and it's 15 feet to the actual residences. So by the time you do the math across the site width here, we're only able to accommodate parking on one side of the street and sidewalk adjacent to the parking on the inner loop of the street. So it's a dimensional challenge that we've that we've run into. In order to comply with all of the requirements of the zoning and the setbacks, we're able to comply with them all, but we were not able to accommodate sidewalk on, on both sides of the street. And I agree with you, it is a preferred design, although it's very common to have sidewalk on one side of the street in, in neighborhoods. And that sidewalk does connect directly to Buena Vista, and the sidewalk would extend along our frontage on Buena Vista and connect to the existing sidewalk that is there in the ultimate half width of the Buena Vista street, if that all makes sense. Yeah, I, I see that as a major problem, major problem. Uh, second question on uh, Buena Creek or Buena Vista Drive, whatever it's called. Um, <laughs> that uh, is that going to be widened to the same width in front of, as it is in front of Wesley? Where there are where there are parking spots there. So the current uh, general plan circulation element identifies Buena Vista Drive as a two-lane uh, rural semi-rural road. So that would include 28 feet from curb to curb within a 40-foot right-of-way. So that 28 feet does not include parking in front of the project. But there is parking in front of Wesley Way. And when that project was approved, uh, Buena Vista Drive was identified as a two-lane collector street, and at that point, identified parking on street. So the street in front of this development would be the same width as in front of Wesley Way, except there would be no parking. It would be actually narrower because it doesn't have provide for the parking. It would be two 14-foot lanes, so there wouldn't be any room for on-street parking. But it would have sidewalks. It would be sidewalk curb entire development. Gutter, correct. Okay. Commissioner Carroll. Oh, I guess I was just, thank you, Chairman. I was just noting, so the, the road to the north has been downsized but we're upsizing the density, proposedly, it seems. Is that, do I have that right? The proposal is trying to align the zoning with the general plan land use designation at this point. But in fact, yes, the, uh, the road in front of this property would not uh, accommodate the additional parking as uh, the Wesley Lane condominium development currently has. And staff was not interested in uh, making a change to the classification of Buena Vista Drive in that area to the, the So the purpose of the meeting tonight is to get input from the commission on what you want to see with respect to the design of this project. It does include a zone change, so it is completely at the city's discretion. If you want to see a wider road in front of the property to allow for additional parking, that can be a direction that's provided by the commission this evening. Thank you. And the applicant supports that for clarity. Okay. Uh, commissioners, architecture is our next, followed by parking and traffic. So, architectural comments? Commissioner Kramer. Okay. The left elevations <laughs> all seem to have just like uh, three windows on the top story, one window on the bottom, and a whole lot of stucco in between. Can anything be done? Um, can we put um, some, maybe possibly some design features around the window, something so that it just doesn't look like a, a canvas? Yes, I agree with you. And when you look at those elevations, it seems like, wow, did they just forget this area? Um, imagine, however, that you have a side yard that is typically either five or 10 feet in this, in this neighborhood. And between your house and the next house, you also have a five and a half foot or a six foot wall or fence. And so 
the area that would be behind that wall or fence, you'll typically have a garage man door right. out to the side for your service, yep. um, as well as the garage, which we typically do not put windows in for security reasons. And so that's why you see, for the most part, that's why you see a large blank canvas there. But we're definitely welcome to making sure that we have enhanced elevations on all four sides and that we're being uh, as conscious as possible about where to really enhance the architecture. Typically, that's going to be in the front and wrapping around the the two sides for a number of feet, as well as in certain locations on the back to make sure that the residents have a nice view outside Perfect. from their backyards. Commissioner Jackal, architecture. Thank you. Uh, that was my exact uh, comment. Those, the, the front facades are fine. The other three are just terrible. They really need some enhancement. I'm also interested with um, the first floor of Plan 3, where there, there is the possibility, with a bedroom and a bathroom, for a separate apartment. I'm sorry, Commissioner. Go ahead. Okay. On the Plan 3, first floor, there's a, a, four, a fourth bedroom and a bath, which is the possibility for a separate apartment. The possibility to set up an apartment? Yeah, for a separate apartment within that house, and which means more drivers, more cars. Um, will the CCR say you can't rent out parts of your house or? The house will be under one meter for services, we would not allow someone to create a lock off with a separate entrance into a home where, uh, you know, for instance, in the county, you, you are restricted from doing multiple residences on a single lot. There's been a number of challenges where uh, homeowners have come in and tried to build a home within a home uh, for people to move down and bring kids back into the house to feel like they have their own kitchen, their own parking area. And, that is not the intent with this architecture. The bedroom down is a very desirable feature, uh, both for people who uh, have a hard time utilizing stairs and for people who just don't like to go upstairs to a bedroom. A lot of times these are used as offices as well. So it is not the intention or the purpose that we would create a separate residential unit within this house, home. Thank you. Commissioner Rossler. Yeah, my uh, other commissioners have uh, have addressed the architectural issue, and and uh, especially the side elevations facing Buena Vista uh, yes. need to be enhanced, and then uh, the back elevations facing the west. Uh, I would be interested in some in enhancement there. I understand the narrowness, the five foot setback, ten feet between buildings. That's kind of an industry standard, so. Um, I, I don't have a problem with that, but where it's visible from off-site, you're going to need to, for my vote, you're going to need to uh, enhance that. Thank you for your comment. Commissioner Looney, please. Uh, just on the exterior, on the street view uh, that you have on sheet A20, uh, you've, got, um, you've got a street view one and a street view two. And on street view one, on the far right edge, we've got a, a little Juliet balcony over the garage door. We have the same type of thing on, same type of illustration on the bottom center of Street View 2, but yet none of your floor plans reflect a door or a window configuration that would lend itself to that kind of layout. So it would be good to have a floor plan that would match that exterior just so the pieces line up. Thank you. We'll make sure to address that. Commissioners, comments on uh, parking and traffic. Commissioner Carroll. Thank you. Um, so we have 195 spaces, four per each uh, house would be two in the garage, two in the driveway, 15 on the street. Um, so I'm assuming there'd be language 
in the CCNR as an HOA that somehow uh, helps the community maintain those four on-site spaces. And enforce, yes, sir. Yeah, I don't know how they do that, but. There's, there's a lot of language that we both put into the CCNRs, as well as empower the HOA as a management arm uh, to enforce the rules and regulations up to and including uh, things that we do, such as towing, hiring, uh, patrol companies to come out and make sure that there is no excess parking happening in red zones or near fire hydrants. Um, there, there's a number of things that we've done over the years as home builders. When we, we talk about 4.5 um, units per acre, as you can imagine, uh, just the, the project recently approved by Warmington is, is a higher density type project than would be 4.5 where you're 20, 25, almost 30 to the acre with two car attached garage housing. So. There's a number of things that we do, uh, both in the CCNRs and through the rules and regulations to empower the HOA to control the parking. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Rossler. Uh, that answered my question. We had the same concern. Mm -hmm. um, you'll probably get a condition from, from us that will require you to have a parking management plan to describe all that to us and that will become part of the project, okay? I think that's a good recommendation. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Jackal. Um, okay, and as part of the parking management plan, there would be no storage in the garages so that people c can park two cars in the garage. That is correct, Commissioner. Um, Buena Vista is a mess. Is there any of Buena Vista that is in the city? Actually, this property is at the city limit, so anything beyond north of this property would be in the county of San Diego. So, only this portion of the city. This is in the city. city. Everything else it's is in the county. county. Well, obviously, the solution is to get the county to do something, but good luck with that. Um, if I may offer, I, I would say that uh, the pastor had a very good comment and I would like to echo uh, the mathematics that are involved in a commercial use and the amount of trips that are designated to this location currently will be far reduced as we incorporate 45 new single family residences. The number of trips during both the peak hours in the early morning from 6.30 or 7 until about 9.00 as well as on the weekends during services now, that will actually, this project would actually improve the amount of traffic in the area. Is it going to solve Buena Vista? It is not. It is only going to improve though, which is kind of a hard thing to digest, but if you've read enough traffic studies, you start to look at the amount of cars that are generated by commercial uses in churches, especially during concentrated hour periods versus a single family residential community, and it is much less intense. Will um, we be able to see um, a traffic study that shows that? That would be good. The, the current um, general plan has a, a housing element designation here. As part of that, it was included in the general plan traffic study, but if that's the recommendation, then we're glad to prepare information that would support the residential and quantify for you and the residents the actual trips. With the project of this size, typically, there hasn't been any evaluation on this, and our environmental planner hasn't reviewed it, but typically a project of this size would require a negative, 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 excuse me, Negative, negative declaration. declaration or mitigated negative declaration and associated with that document would be a traffic analysis. So I'm assuming a traffic analysis will be done. Okay, that will be me for that then. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. No, go ahead and you can do circulation with parking or wait to the end and any other comments, take your pick. Um, I, I, I find our, our general plan may have a, I don't wanna say an inconsistency, but to designate this piece of property medium density and allow 10 dwelling units per acre and yet have a rural residential road designation in front of it, I can see that starting north of this when we 
when that uh, road goes in, on into the county. Um, I, would, I would recommend that we uh, widen the street out to match the property to the south and uh, allow for, uh, for on-street parking in front of the project. Thank you for your comment. Okay, commissioners, next up would be landscape and amenities. Commissioner Carroll. Thank you, Chairman. Um, so these are three and four bedroom units. So these are family homes, uh, primarily, I'm, I'm assuming. It's 166 bedrooms, uh, two small areas to recreate. Uh, so I feel a project of this size, 45 units, 166 bedrooms, that's gonna be 100 to 120 kids, uh, in my opinion. I think, I think there needs to be more space uh, f for uh, a complex like this for recreation. So some type of additional amenity additional separate amenity than what's shown. Commissioner Gerritsen. Thank you for your comment. Um, I was gonna basically say the same thing. I mean, you're really, with that many kids here, and right now you've designed something for adults, basically, or bigger kids. I would suggest you look at a tot lot or something that would, that would bridge the, the age gap because they're not gonna be walking any place to to do that and um you know there are a couple of parks a mile or so away schools a mile away so most of the kids are going to be in that area and you're kind of boxed in so i totally agree that it, you know we really need top lots or something uh, a big improvement over what you have now commissioner jackal I, I echo both commissioners' comments about that. I, I think it's um, too dense. I, I think uh, taking out the, the up to say five uh, houses, especially the two in the front right against uh, Buena Vista would be good. And it desperately needs more play space for the kids. They're gonna be on an island and they're not gonna have any place to play. So we need more play space. Thank you for your comment. Commissioner Rossler. I should have waited to push my button. Uh, I agree with the rest of the commissioners. Um, uh, I, I would recommend to you that you look at the projects that this commission has approved recently and the recreation facilities. We've been through this process with several other yeah. developers. Mm -hmm. uh, they have come back to us with uh, recreation plans that we have found uh, really acceptable. Uh, you're going to have 15-foot private rear yards, um, and uh, so I think most everybody's going to do their barbecuing out there. So I would recommend that you, uh, you at least, you got a green space for kids to kick a ball around. I like that. I would look for a hard court area. Uh, I know the noise from basketball can be a, a concern. Um, a pool would be great uh, if you can go that far and, and still make it affordable. Um, and then, I, I, this is probably off the topic, but is the HOA gonna maintain the front yards? Um, we're at the early design. Um, in condominium, detached condominium communities, I've, I've been successful in both, both ways. ways. Yeah. Um, this, to me, feels like I would like to have more pride of ownership in the front yard and control of the front yard in this more rural uh, area where each homeowner would have the opportunity to design and install their own front yards. Okay. So We're that's my vision now, but it's not, it's not complete or set. Um, you're going to need to provide us with uh, some guidelines. Yes, sir. Uh, so mm -hmm. that uh, we know what the, home, what the homeowner's flexibilities are and what their requirements are in, in those guidelines. Okay. Understood. We're familiar with that. Thank you. And I would like to uh, uh, just point out, if I may, with regard to the open space, um, there is a private open space requirement in the proposed zoning, uh, which calls for only 100 square feet per home. 
the common open space uh, is, is more akin to the actual bedroom count and how that is calculated. But each home here has a minimum of at least 600 square feet in a private rear yard. Uh, so we have far exceeded that and that is part of the vision of this community is to create that real single family detached feel. I can, I, I'm not saying that we won't do things and make efforts to improve and increase the size of the common open space. I just wanted to make sure the commission knows that we do have private backyards that far exceed the, the minimum requirement and, and give a good feel for a, a rear yard space and a small front yard space. Thank you. Commissioner Bell. Thank you. I just want to echo the comments. Um, drop the density a little bit. I think uh, everyone else has already stated it pretty well, but I think you'll win some big favor by reducing it, especially at the front entrance and then the back and going along with the recreation. Whatever you end up offering, create a space where the community can feel like they own it and they have it. I think that's the theme we've been going with in the last couple of months as we've seen these projects. Um, people will leave to go get food, they'll walk down the street, but we're seeing success in neighborhoods that have a focal point that the people can be proud of and look at, and ideally that's a selling point for your company as well. Um, quick question, are these going to be sold under the Meritage label, or do you guys have a smaller division for condo size or any idea? Oh, great question. No, everything is um, built and sold under Meritage Homes. Okay. We are just MLC Holdings, and we process entitlements and statewide. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Commissioners, any other comments uh, regarding this project? Commissioner Looney. Thank you. Just a question for staff. This went to the, has this gone to city council at all? Yeah, my presentation, it actually went before the uh, city council last year for discussion regarding the, the zone change. And um, they, in fact, did have a concern with the open space as well. But at the conclusion of that discussion, they did suggest that the applicant move forward with their request and go through the, the proper channels through entitlement. So, but yes, okay, it has. thank you. Commissioner Rosler. Yeah, just a comment about the, the site and, uh, and its general plan designation. Um, five years ago, and this is probably more for the neighborhood than anybody else, Five years ago, the city updated their, our general plan, and in that update, we reviewed all the land uses throughout the city. And when we came to this particular piece of property, we designated it medium density and allows 10 dwelling units per acre. So what these folks are doing is implementing a decision that we made five years ago, and it's consistent. Their density is consistent, although there may be some discussion about maybe a couple of houses too much. So um, it's not that we're not listening to you, but that decision on the density has, was made five years ago, and we're, this project will implement that. So we're, uh, that's why we, you're probably hearing a lot of support for the project tonight. It's adjacent to multifamily housing to the west and to the south. Uh, the medium density going with a, a single family uh, you're going to have postage stamp lots. Yes, sir. Okay. For lack uh, of a, a single-family home term. on a small lot is a great transition in my mind between the higher density to the west and to the south to the rural residential. So, um, just keep that in mind. Thank you. Thank you. Um, behind you is our student commissioner. Do you have any comments this evening about the project? I don't have many comments. Uh, they mirror most of your comments, although I was interested in... A little closer to the mic. I was interested in maybe the prospect of a one-way street to reduce the amount of people pulling out of Buena Vista. Um, I don't know if that would work at all. I'm not familiar with that, but it was just something I was thinking. And uh, in terms of for the high school students, I don't think they'll interfere with this development it's too far away so yeah thank you very much uh, mr tucker uh, mr wrestler did we give you everything that you need from us yeah i think there was a thorough discussion i think they understand the concerns you provided them tonight and i think they have some work to do okay yep. thank you very much all for your time and thank you also to the neighborhood who came out and spoke thank you all right
John, are you going to take over from here for the um, commission staff discussion, council action, and reports? So uh, our next scheduled meeting would be February 21st, but we do not have <clears throat> enough items to agendize that uh, meeting, so we will not be having a meeting on the 21st of February. The next meeting will be March 7th. Okay. Uh, we have a couple of items um, that will most likely come on the 7th. Uh, for the Planning Commission's information, we are um, working on a wireless communication facilities ordinance, uh, which is out for public review. Uh, you can check it on the city's website. Uh, we are having a community meeting tomorrow night, Wednesday night at 6 p.m. here at City Hall to take public input on the draft ordinance. And um, if things all go as planned, we should have that before the commission for your consideration in March. Um, and that's, uh, I'm trying to think if there's any council actions that I need to report. I think that's it. Okay. And then we have our um, council dinner next week, correct? Oh, yes. On the 15th, 15th uh, Wednesday. next Wednesday night is council commission dinner at Shadow Ridge. Okay. Uh, comments, reports from the uh, commission members. Uh, Commissioner Carroll. Mr. Conley, what's the uh, building going up next to the post office off of the uh, south, uh, south Santa Fe? The that Steel is a now? medical office building two-story medical office building that was approved by the zoning administrator uh, because it's under 10,000 square feet that it allows for administrative approval. Right. Yeah. Pensies. What was that location? Uh, right next to the post office off of South Santa Fe. There's a, a building under construction that's next to, I think, the Commonwealth Bank. Okay. Okay, good. Commissioner Gerritsen. Um, I had talked to uh, Mr. Conley about this, so I wanted to bounce it off the commission that I would like to see a city map that would show where every vacant lot is that is vacant now. Not so much to try to project what's going to go there, but to give us a feel for what could be coming down the pike, you know, in terms of location. And the second aspect of that would be you've heard a lot of a lot of the uh, residents talk about open space. Well, if they know what is open, you know, then they could go maybe to the city council and say that should be parkland, that should be open space. But I would like to see us maybe just list where all the open space is. And then, you know, how we use it, we can decide later. But I think that would serve us well as we look uh, you know, like, like this property we were dealing with today, you know, knowing that, that it's county and everything within the county uh, is, is a much lower density kind of gave us a lot, of, a lot of relief. So I would like to see just a list of all the vacant uh, lots in the entire city. Good comment. What do you think? Commissioner Jackal? Thank you. Um, it just occurred to me, we asked the um, council to um, up the amenities. Yes, they did approve that. Did I not respond back to you on the, oh, I should give you an update on the mixed use. I'm sorry. We went to the council on the 24th and got our final direction on the mixed use zone. Um, the consensus was to uh, change the parking, landscaping, and setback standards to match the multifamily citywide zones. So that was all uh, agreed to by the council. Um, they did have one stipulation along North Santa Fe between Vista Village and Beaubier, that stretch, um, to allow some lower standards and to incentivize development in that area because they were interested in seeing some development there. Um, and they agreed to the amenity request by the uh, commission as well. So we'll be bringing those changes back uh, for formal approval, uh, hopefully in March and April. Yeah. They, didn't they also remove the designation or, or start uh, the process to remove the designation? Yes, yeah, so the other thing is they rezoned a few prop or recommended rezoning uh, the properties on Breeze Hill and Melrose that have commercial uses on them as well as the apartment site that was just approved in the event that that project doesn't go forward, it would revert back to commercial. They also recommended rezoning um, the vacant mixed-use property up on Bow Beer that's across from the Sky Apartments. We call it Frog Rock. Um, as well as the Stater Brothers uh, Commercial Center on North Santa Fe and Bow Beer and the Vaughn Center at Santa Fe and Civic Center. So we'll be working on those rezones to bring those back separately. 
Mr. Stone, any comments from your end? Nope. All right. Uh, with that, 811, we're adjourned. Great.